I'm Charlie Brooker, and welcome to So Wrong, It's Right, a panel show celebrating errors, inappropriateness, and failure. Uh, Jeffrey Archer once wrote, The secret of success is never believing you are successful. So that's one thing I've got in common with Jeffrey Archer. I can't believe he's successful either. <laughs> This show is all about admitting mistakes, and the bloke on the door admitted three huge ones tonight in the shape of Lee Mack, Sarah Millican, and Graham Linehan. Uh, this first round is called Wrong Time, Wrong Place, and I'll be asking my guests to outwrong each other with stories from their own miserable pasts. This week, I've asked them to recount the worst thing that's happened to them when they've been on their own. Oscar Wilde said he never felt more alone than when he was in a crowd. But that was before he was put in solitary confinement. <laughs> Might have swung his judgment. Uh, it can be fascinating to see what celebrities do when they think absolutely no one's watching. Brad Pitt picks his nose. Uh, Cheryl Cole swears like a trooper. And Adrian Childs says good morning and welcome to daybreak. <laughs> What is the worst thing that's happened to you when you've been on your own? I once hid in a cupboard from Anthea Turner. <laughs> and that, Sonny, is all you're getting. <laughs> I don't elaborate on my anecdotes. I was, I was actually... Um, it's true, Sonny. When, when you start off doing comedy, uh, and I, I have started... You, uh, you, you often do television warm-ups. It's hard, really hard work. In fact, it's probably the hardest thing to do. In to, in, well, not, you know, it's not. It's Ch harder Chilean than mine. miners would probably argue with that. <laughs> but I would argue back and say, you're wrong, it's harder than that. <laughs> but basically, I was a warm-up man on a TV show in the mid-90s called Pet Power, which Anthea Turner used to present. And it was about Anthea Turner sitting on a sofa and bringing on pets who could perform various... Powers and tricks. You can imagine. I can't believe it didn't get recommissioned. Animals performing powers. <laughs> well, not powers, but you know. I mean, they didn't. They didn't fly. Well, they did because some of them were birds. But they didn't. Uh, they didn't. They didn't have. You know, they didn't breed ice or whatever superheroes do. Animals don't have powers. They have characteristics. Listen, I didn't create the format. Have a word with Anthea. It was called Pet Power. It wasn't called Pets. That would have been even duller. And now the dog. And the dog just comes on and goes. <laughs> and then walks off again, actually, it probably would have been more interesting. But, so, so basically, pet power, would, and they'd come on and they'd have an interesting story, usually end with the bit, you know, where the hamster saved the child from drowning, everyone would cry, it's a bloody awful show. And um, I was the warm-up man, and I, I was so nervous and, and new to the job, I came on and I did my ten minutes, and they said, don't worry, it's the kind of show, once you've been on, you never have to go back on again, unless it's an emergency. So I went up and I watched it on the monitor in the dressing room, and... Anthea had a budgie on her finger that was supposed to do something, like a backflip or whatever they do. And uh, instead of doing the trick, it flew up into the rafters of the studios. And I heard someone on the floor through the monitor go, get the warm-up man back on. <laughs> so I panicked and hid in the cupboard <laughs> of my dressing room. And I heard this bloke banging on the door going, Lee, Lee! And I just hid. And I stayed there for about an hour and a half. <laughs> and then I resurfaced. And they said, where have you been? And I went... Oh, I've just been through, through there having a cigarette. Did you need me? I, I didn't know you needed me. You told me you didn't need me for ten minutes. Sorry, I was around. I just... What's happened? <laughs> what's happened to the budgie? They said, how do you know about the budgie? I said, all right, I'll rephrase it. What's happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah, what's the worst thing that's happened to you when you've been alone? Um, there's lots of good things that have happened to me when I've been on my own. <laughs> um... <laughs> Probably the worst thing, it's not going to sound very major, I feel, I feel like this should be uh, much worse than it is, but it was quite scary at the time. Uh, my car broke down while I was at a service station, and I broke down sort of in the middle of the road. And first thing I did, stupidly, rang my boyfriend and said, should I ring the RAC? Because I'm a feminist. Um, <laughs> and he said, yes. So I rang the RAC and uh, the lady said, are you all right? Well, I had a book, a cardi and a sandwich, so I was champion, really. Um, <laughs> so that's what I said. And she said, all right, OK, well, we'll put you further down the list. So I thought, well, that's stupid, isn't it? So I then said, but I am still a woman alone. <laughs> In my best pensioner voice. And she said, oh, quite right, we'll pop you back up again. So I'm at the top of the list with me book and me cardi and me sandwich. It's 10 o'clock at night, but I'm under a light. I've broken down in the perfect place possible. 
And a car pulls up alongside me with four or five young men in and they scream abuse at me. And it was quite scary because I couldn't lock the doors because it was an electrical fault. So they shouted at me, why have you parked there, you stupid cow? And I decided that the best approach to not be attacked was just to shout back. So I shouted back, I haven't parked here, you stupid B. <laughs> <laughs> I've broken down. So they were quite happy with me being a bit loud and off they went and then the same thing happened again different boys different car but exactly the same thing happened again so by now i'm getting really uh, irate and quite aggressive and a lorry pulled up and i thought oh for god's sake so i just got out the car and started pacing towards this tank of a man who's got out of the lorry and i started going what <laughs> what <laughs> and he said do you want us to push you out the way love oh if you could that would be lovely thank you very much <laughs> So Did he literally push you out of the way? <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> oh, I see. In the car. <laughs> Never say yes to a man who says, do you want me to push you out of the way? You're asking for trouble, aren't you? Because the first thing I was worried about was what if he couldn't push it, because it was only a little car, but I'm, you know, a relatively sturdy woman. Um, <laughs> so I told him that I was... <laughs> that I was transporting some bricks for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, uh, Graham, what is the worst thing that's happened to you when you've been on your well, own? Well, I, I nearly drowned. That's one thing. I was, I was a little boy. I was a little kid. And, uh, that's harrowing. Yeah. You said the worst thing. <laughs> uh, can I just say, that's I, thought, I thought it was supposed to be like a funny thing as well as being a bad thing. Yeah, but this is funny. I've got funny bits. I haven't okay. finished. <laughs> Uh, what happened was uh, I was I was swimming and I was enjoying it and there were lots of people about uh, so I wasn't really on my own but I was sort of on my own in a way in a psychologically sec- alone well, no no in a, a, yeah psychologically alone because you know there were all these girls around and I couldn't speak to them and, and boys who were who were much kind of cooler than me and I couldn't speak to them either do you understand so what was, alone means yeah <laughs> <laughs> no I was alone in the adolescent sense you know feeling kind of lonely they, believe me it pays off Charlie Have okay patience. okay. This is a tough show. <laughs> anyway, I, I kind of went under the water, and there was a kind of uh, undertow, and when I, when I stuck my head up, the beach was miles away. I mean, miles away. And I was suddenly, literally, on my own, you know? So I had, that, I had a few moments of thinking, oh, well, I'll, I'll just try and swim back. And I couldn't. And I was swimming and swimming, and the water was, you know, you can see everyone's quiet, because everyone's thinking, wow, there could have been no Father Ted. You know? <laughs> uh, and... Uh, <laughs> So I was really tired, and I suddenly realized that I was going to have to shout help. And the thing about shouting help is that when you have to do it, it seems really cliched. Do you know what I mean? And I always hated being obvious, you know? Do you know what I mean? So, so I had to do little variations, you know? Ooh, I need help. I'm, I, I can't do Oh, could you use some help, you know? <laughs> and then finally no one was paying attention to that because it didn't sound dramatic enough. So I had to kind of go, help, like that. And I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, d- I wasn't a good enough actor, you know? And I really was drowning. I went under once, you know? Why do I, you felt ashamed of shouting help? Yeah. It's really weird. That's when a you... lot of Irish guilt, isn't it? <laughs> No, the other thing I did on my own, which is, which is one of those kind of embarrassing things, which I prefer as a, as a thing to do, because it, it involves me not dying. <laughs> I was in a hotel, and uh, I set off a shower alarm. I had a shower, and, you know, feeling quite relaxed. And I turned it to the left, thing because it was too hot or something, and an alarm went off. And I thought, what the... What? What have I done, you know? And it just kept going. And I thought, oh, I had done a hotel, and I was messing with it for ages ages and ages and then finally I got out of the uh, shower went into the room and rang up reception and said and there was no one there about half an hour passed with this alarm just going off and I thought what the hell and finally there was a knock at the door and someone said what are you doing and I said what and he said there's a fire (laughs) (laughs) and all of them was I had just coincidentally turned the thing at the very moment the alarm went off. So, Lee Mack, you hid in a cupboard from Anthea Turner. Sarah, you broke down on the motorway and were heckled by passers-by. And, Graham, uh, you were uh, sort of ashamed to cry for help. Well, I think the point's going to go to Graham. Well done, Graham.
Now, our next round is called Do Your Worst, in which I'll be asking my guests to pitch me a terrible idea. This week, I've asked them to dream up an awful game show format. Uh, some of Britain's most popular game shows revolve around something inherently simple. Vernon K. <laughs> Really fair. Um, <laughs> game shows don't have to be complex. Deal or no deal, for instance, famously poses just one question. How much longer till Come Dine With Me is on? <laughs> so, uh, Sarah, Sarah Millican, what is your rubbish game show idea? Um, it's called Take Me Out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's intelligent ITV audience members compete to shoot Paddy McGuinness in the head. No likey, no lifey. You are applauding the murder <laughs> of a blameless man. No matter what, well, well, maybe not blameless, but I mean, surely it doesn't deserve to be shot. I like the bits they do at the beginning. The, uh, let the plum see the jam. <laughs> When they showed the video clip of the man, and, uh, and th there was one way they showed it, and he said that he was a part-time model and all the girls kept their lights on. And then he said, oh, but uh, that's just part-time. My real job is an architect. And eight women went, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Not interested. Just drawing. I don't want a man who knows how walls work. Will <laughs> <laughs> the architect columns this? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Imagine if, that if, if human civilization was wiped out tomorrow and the only surviving artifact was a recording of Take Me Out. <laughs> we, would be we would be viewed as lower than, I don't know, mice, I think, in the grand scheme of things. But, but for someone who uh, professes to... To be to fair, mice can't do a show like that. It does, <laughs> it does require a lot of preparation and a lot of... <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's a lot of cameras. stuff that goes on behind big, the scenes. Big cameras. <laughs> Let the mouse see the hole. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds horrific. Um, but for someone who professes to... Uh, I mean, I don't want to cast a... Uh, you sound you sound like you're not a fan of Take Me Out, but you seem to have watched more than one episode. Just for research purposes. <laughs> It's one of those things that I, I quite like to watch because I like to um, feel smug about not liking. You must identify with this, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not above it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a very successful game show. Yeah. Does, yeah, because there's a lot of, you know, women who haven't been invited out with their slaggy friends that night, so they watch... <laughs> watch the telly programme and feel like they're in a nightclub. <laughs> well, I mean, it takes a special kind of show to make Blind Date look like the halcyon days of broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sarah, your idea is a fatal take on Take Me Out. Graham, Mr Graham Linehan, tell us all about your I terrible... I got a few. Scrabble 2000. <laughs> Already excited. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Futuristic Scrabble, set in the future. <laughs> Did you come up with that idea when you were drowning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flash in front of my eyes. Thought that I'd, you can have it. Uh, uh, okay, so okay, so, 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 so wait, no. Okay, yeah. How many keys? <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> Just can't, you know, you've got a lot of them, and you. <laughs> There's a few questions about format. They could be in a dusty jar. <laughs> or, or, or on a key ring, which might be a bit more exciting. Okay. It, they jangle and that'll be... There could be, there could be a moment where it goes jing, 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 and goes, how many keys? It could be radio. Because the jangling of the keys will give you some clue as to how many there are. This is a brilliant idea. <laughs> I'm not finished. <laughs> he, hasn't told, he hasn't told you about how many keys 2,000 yet. <laughs> <laughs> that one's set in the future. <laughs> But I've got, I've got, I think I've got a killer one. I think I've got a really good one, which is um, through the keyhole, but it's for serial killers. It's like serial killer homes. <laughs> what was the guy who did through the keyhole? Lloyd Grossman. Lloyd Grossman, yeah. That, that was the worst impression. <laughs> that was an impression. <laughs> but um, but what's, what's good about the show, what's kind of exciting, is that halfway through his description, the guy comes home. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we see him on kind of security cameras opening the door and stuff. And then the people in the studio are, Lloyd, Lloyd, he's coming home. <laughs> and then Lloyd just goes, oh, no. <laughs> And he runs, to, he runs to a closet and closes the closet, and we've got a little tiny camera in with him. In the, and I always think Lloyd Grossman's probably a nose breather. So you hear, like, you hear this really kind of... As, as the guy walks back and forth outside the closet, you know, saying, I thought I left this, uh, this straight razor over there and stuff. And, um, and that's it. And so half of it is kind of what kind of serial killer it is, but the other half is a very, very frightening race against time to save Lloyd. <laughs> that's an amazing idea for them. Um, <laughs> that's, that's astonishing. Um, Mr. Lee Mack. Mr. Lee well, if I had a similar idea to Graham's, it was going to be uh, through the keyhole thing where you see them coming back and you hide in the cupboard, but mine was set in Anthea Turner's house. I can't <laughs> now do that. That's um, actually more frightening. That would be more terrifying. <laughs> and, and Lloyd Grossman would go, Oh no! He's the Mrs. Anthea Turner! <laughs> Which I think you'll find is genuinely the most accurate impression so far this evening. It's the most accurate, accurate one we'll get tonight. So my idea is, I'm a celebrity animal, get me out of here. And what you do is you get various celebrity animals like Lassie or Wallace or Gromit, I can never remember which is which, uh, Cheetah, Skippy, the bush kangaroo, and they have to do a series of bush tucker trials where they have to eat the anus of Christopher Biggins. <laughs> and, or even worse, if they lose, they have to eat the food from Iceland that he advertises. Um, <laughs> It doesn't have to be Biggins, it could be anything, and you get different animals to come on and, and get their revenge on the humans. I would watch them, I'd watch them fight. I'd watch celebrity animals fight to the death. Oh. A kangaroo against Wallace and Gromit? Come on, it's an unfair Gromit fight. Gromit isn't real. <laughs> what, a Wallace is, you weirdo. <laughs> Gromit would be the most boring guest on a reality show because every, it just moves his arm incrementally. Somebody has to come in and move it for him. Well, Once every, every well, that, three they had to minutes. Peter Andre when he was on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yeah, no, that's, that's a very good point. So, so, uh, so, Sarah, you have suggested a fatal take on Take Me Out. Uh, <laughs> Graham, you suggested an entire raft of ideas from Scrabble 2002 through the keyhole with serial killers. And Lee, you suggested I'm a celebrity animal get me out of here. I think the winner has to be Graham's uh, Through the Keyhole with Serial Killers. It must happen. It <laughs> must happen. OK, this round is called This Putrid Modern Hell. In it, I'll be asking my guests to tell me about their biggest pet hate from the modern world, and my favourite answer wins a point. Modern technology is destroying our ability to concentrate. In fact, the government is so concerned about our shortening attention spans, they've commissioned a team of scientists to carry out a five-minute study <laughs> and text them the results during the ad break in Hollyoaks. <laughs> Uh, plastic surgery. Plastic surgery is a modern phenomenon which has become incredibly commonplace. These days, if you accuse someone of having Botox, they won't bat an eyelid. <laughs> Sometimes for months. <laughs> Graham, Graham Linehan, what annoys you most about the modern world? Well, for, I, I, lo I kind of love it. I kind of love everything that's happening now. You think 2000 is futuristic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, imagine 2000. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I guess if I had to pick something... Which you do. Uh, yeah. Uh, I hate the way they ramp up the volume in ads when it's uh, during an ad break. I find that, like, uh, aggressive and evil. <laughs> and, and I think it should be banned. It... In, in all seriousness. <laughs> the amount of times I've uh, kind of... I've kind of turned down the sound... To, because an ad's come on, and then he <laughs> watched the next few minutes of the programme thinking, why can't we suddenly not hear anything? <laughs> you know, and you're, oh, right, we have to do that. You know, you're constantly just messing with the control, and all you want to do is relax. People are busy. People have tough lives. I don't, but people do. <laughs> you know? Actually, two things. Remote controls are such a pain. Well, why? They're impossible. 
Well, have you ever seen remote controls? It's like an airplane cockpit. I you like know? that. How could you like that? I like it when they've got like a joystick and a mouse. It's me versus the machine. Oh, Do you know got... what? This is true. We had a babysitter come on. We got five remote controls to watch normal telly because you have to go through all the different systems. And I wrote a five-page document to the new babysitter. And as we went out and we travelled, I, I talked her through it for about 25 minutes. And as we were driving off, she rang up and said, so what are your kids called? <laughs> Uh, Lee, Mr. Lee Mac, what's your biggest modern grudge? Well, last time I came on the show and you asked me this question, I, uh, <laughs> I recall we had a rather calm debate about Twitter, and I said that I didn't like Twitter, and I realised, I think anyway, that tonight all three of you are on Twitter, so we'll leave that one well alone. <laughs> and instead, see how we've outnumbered you now. Yes, yes, I, I, exactly. It's like malaria; it spreads. <laughs> and, <laughs> And also that, that this thing that everything's got to be reviewed. For example, I bought, I bought some kettle descaler on eBay for £2.50. Oh, yeah, girls. And, and, I, and I got a slightly, not, I wouldn't say threatening uh, message, but he wasn't happy that I hadn't reviewed the purchase. Now, it was £2.50 and it was a kettle descaler. I thought that was the end of the friendship. <laughs> Turns out I've got yeah. to make a review. I've got to tell him how the purchase went. Yeah. <laughs> You even have to review no, no. the reviews. I've looked at a review of myself online that said it was the most disgusting hour I've spent in my life. I never want to see this hideous bloke ever again. He was boring. And then it said, what did you think of this review? How would you review it? <laughs> oh, I found it quite painful, actually. Is that, is that a... And that was just a dating site. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, though, it won't be long until everyone who's, who's registered on Facebook or anywhere has a review attached to them. You can't go on holiday anymore without looking up where you're going on, like, TripAdvisor or somewhere like that, where there's people going, it was terrible, oh, I didn't like the view, or it rained a lot, I didn't, I didn't like the shape of the clouds yeah. over the bay. It's like people get furiously angry about all sorts of things, and we will all have a personal but review. So if you go that? into a shop and you're rude to the assistant, they'll, they'll go on Wait, and run a review. But that's fine, but that's only if you're rude, but the problem is if it's a normal person, I buy the kettle to scale for £2.50, and, and it all goes to plan, right? Both parties are happy. It's not that different. If I go to the newsagent and buy a Mars bar, and I walk out, and then an hour later there's a knock on the door, and he goes, uh, sorry, I hope you don't mind me asking, but um, how do you feel it went when you... Uh... <laughs> I go, well, yeah, I got, got it back home fine, and I ate it, and, uh, and how did it go with you putting the money in the till? Yeah, that all went pretty to plan. I said, do you want to come in? We'll be from friends now, and we'll discuss this, shall we? Dear freak. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, what do you hate most about modern life? Um, I stayed in a hotel, and I asked, I went into the room, and there was a shower, but no bath. Ooh, watch that's, out. That's, exactly, that's already <laughs> got me back up. <laughs> I had a new, you know, shower gel that I wanted to have a go at of in the bath because uh, I, you know, book trends sometimes. And uh, I had a new magazine. I was all ready. You can't do that in the shower. So I rang downstairs and thought, <laughs> I'm a reasonable person. It's a hotel. They'll just move me to another room. It's unlikely that it'll be that busy on a Tuesday night. And I rang down to find out that the entire hotel has no baths but they have an Apple Mac in every room. <laughs> There's no app that will allow me to sit in my own filth. <laughs> there I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what, there's a Mac that'll let you sit in your own filth. <laughs> <laughs> but they're disgusting, let it. <laughs> but surely, surely, I mean, the, the, the problem is, why, why, what's so great about a bath? Oh, my God, you <laughs> let something go there. Yeah. What, what, um, no, come on. Yeah. What, you're, it's saving you're space. You're a typical nerd, aren't you? The last time I was on here, you, two hours you argued how good Twitter was. What's so good about a bath? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but as opposed to a shower. What's so bloody great? Well, it's not just functional. It wasn't just that I was dirty and needed to be cleaned. Because you can do that with a good tongue. Um, <laughs> It's one of the powers that animals us, have. Exactly. I didn't have a dog with us. Uh, I had wet wipes, but that wasn't going to be enough. It was the relaxing of side of things. OK, so, Graham, it's ear-splitting adverts for you. For Lee, it's internet reviews. And for Sarah, it's hotels minus the baths. You know what? I'm going to... Because I wasn't, wasn't a, it wasn't something that I had ever considered before, I'm going to give the point to Sarah. Oh. 
OK, and now to our final round in which I'll be asking my guests a series of quick-fire questions. As ever, the wrongest answer to each one wins a point. So, what's the worst <laughs> idea for a theme park? I got one. <laughs> oh, man, can I remember? It was in Dublin. It was called... Uh, That's enough, surely. It was called... Yeah, no, it actually exists. It's called Printerland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, they've got a franchise of here called Carpet World. Have you been to that? <laughs> yeah. And Leatherland. Yeah, land. All yeah sorts of they're really rubbish. bad. The kids hate it. Yeah. Hate it. <laughs> I think, uh, instead of worst idea, this, this would be a worst idea for most people, but it would be my favourite kind of theme park, would be Safety World, um, <laughs> where everybody just holds the bags... Because <laughs> I don't do roller coasters, but I'm good at holding bags while other people go and have fun. <laughs> I, thought you were, I thought you were going to say there is, there is a sort of safety theme park that they take kids. It's an educational place where they stage traffic accidents in front of children. <laughs> the sickest place. Genuinely. Where, where is this? I don't know. I mean, I imagine the drive there and back is pretty harrowing. <laughs> <laughs> idea of that. I think, I think I'm going to give the point to Graham for printer lag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what is the worst film to show as an in-flight movie? Uh, Alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great film. I love Alive. I can't believe that it's even a moral debate. I would have eaten those people before it landed. <laughs> what is the problem? They're dead. Eat them. You're a bit peckish. Why even wait? And they Jesus. cast it with delicious people. Delicious. Looking people, excuse me. Um, <laughs> anything that's longer than the flight. Uh, I, I, I've still not seen the end to An Eye for an Eye with Sally Field and Kiefer Sutherland. They said, uh, now we have to turn the films off because we're going to oh, yeah, start the that. descent. I love that. That's my favourite thing. I just, I just wanted them to go round like like another lap, maybe, so I could see. <laughs> lap. So I could see who done it. Do you ever get people plodding when they play lands? I love yeah. that. Yay. The worst one is when the captain so comes weird. on, interrupts the film, and goes, "I don't know about you, but I am glued to this film. It's brilliant." <laughs> <laughs> I cannot take my eyes off it. Absolutely riveting. That's the film. Uh, I'm going to give the point to Sarah. Oh. The longer, a film longer than the flight. What, what is the worst first line of a romantic novel? Uh, Jane knew it was time to settle. <laughs> <laughs> Can't beat that. That's a point to Sarah. <laughs> uh, that noise, that noise means we've reached the end of the show, making Sarah Millican this week's worst contestant. <laughs> Congratulations, Sarah. You are officially so wrong, you're right. Commiserations to Lee Mack and Graham Linehan. Now go away. <laughs> <laughs> 